Hey guys, uh, Bear here from the table to do a little deck tech with you. Um, recently we have talked about doing an EDH tournament um, with all four of us using a point system. <clears throat> the other three guys have talked about their decks and now it's kind of my turn. Um, so I'm going to talk to you today about my homeboy, Yasana, the Wanderer Bard. So essentially, if anybody has ever played Pod in Modern before he got banned, um, he does very similar things, um, however, you do not have to sacrifice the creature using his ability. Um, <clears throat> if, as you can see here, uh, you pay 2 and a green, tap, put a verse counter on Yasan, and then search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost equal to the number of verse counters on Yasan. So, start off with your 1, go to your 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to whatever, essentially. Um, if he dies, goes to the command zone, comes back, he comes back with zero, so you start from ground zero. <clears throat> Before I get into the creature base, I want to talk about the land base. Um, I run 35 lands. You can, you can kind of edit it to suit your needs. Um, I, I only run four non-basics just because I have so many creatures that can fetch up basics. Um, it's green. I ramp. It just happens. Um, I'm going to start off with the two LD cards that I actually play. That is Tectonic, Tectonic Edge and Ghost Quarter. <clears throat> um, obviously, you can get your Strip Mines, your Wastelands, whatever you need to get your fix. I just chose these two for budget reasons. Um, and then I have a Nykthos because we're mono green. Uh, you know, we're going to have a lot of devotion, so we're going to use that. Then I have a Thespian Stage. We're going to play with other people's goodies. I don't have a Gaia's Cradle. Somebody else says, fuck it, I'm going to use it. <clears throat> um, and then we have our 35 basic forest. I mean 31, sorry, excuse me. Um, nothing too crazy there. No gurus, no nothing wild. Um, I am going to talk to you now about our removal suite. And you're probably thinking, what do you mean removal? Well, I'm talking about removal for artifacts and enchantments. Very few and far between do people have ways to actually deal with threats. Now, <clears throat> I mean, you'll have your your, ba your basic naturalize, and then Viridian Shamans, Viridian Zealots, uh, Acidic Slimes, my, my all-time favorite, Bane of Progress, uh, ETB, destroy all artifacts and enchantments, put a 1-1 one, one counter on him for each one destroyed this way. Um, and then Wicker Baw, Elder, at our 4-drop. Comes in with a minus one, minus one counter. Pay green, remove it, destroy an artifact or enchantment. Um, there's lots of ETB effects as well, like Reclamation Sage, Conclave Naturalist, Acidic Slime. Um, I also run Bramble Crush. Uh, we don't really have a way to deal with Planeswalkers other than turning sideways, so this is a this is a great card. It's, it's a cheaper Desert Twister in a way, um, except Desert Twister hits creatures, I think. But Bramble Crush hits non creatures. <clears throat> and then you have your OG bad daddy of Terastamu. So, that's kind of the removal. Um, a few things that I did want to show you that I think everybody should be running uh, De Glamour and Unravel the Aether. They do the exact same things. You choose an artifact or an enchantment, it gets shuffled into that owner's library. How many times have you ran across, like, an indestructible Platinum Angel and there's no way that you can actually deal with that in Mono Green? Well, guess what? You get to shuffle it in. Same thing with all those Theros gods. It's just another way for you to deal with threats. Uh, speaking of threats and things like that, I'm going to talk about ways that we can protect ourselves. So, <clears throat> there's not any counter spells in green, obviously. We're not playing Force of Will. Uh, this is the closest thing that you can get to a counter spell in green as far as Wraths or anything like that. Uh, Heroic Intervention. It's a new card out of Aether Revolt. Um, permanents you control gain hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. That's, that's a big deal. Um, I also run Sylvan Safekeeper as a one drop to kind of protect Yasan because we want to get up there. We want our numbers high. Um, and then a few ways just to kind of protect ourselves from random things. I play Malyra because I hate Infect, to be honest with you. I mean, I get it. It's a way to win the game, but we don't want to lose that way. So we're going to play Malyra. And then also, I'm running Tajuru Preserver. 
So almost everybody, no, everybody has access to all his dust. This kind of stops that. So those are the four uh, just kind of quirky creatures that I like to run, as well as spells. <clears throat> um, and then, speaking of Vyasan and protecting him, he's a pretty big focal point of the deck. However, we can win without him. But there's ways that we can accelerate even faster. Uh, one of those being Seedborn Muse. You know, your friendly half profit of group picks. Uh, on top of that, <clears throat> I'm running an enchantment called Awakening, which is similar to Seedborn Muse, but it is a global effect. Everybody gets to untap their creatures and untap their lands. Now, it may seem kind of bad, but at the same point, it kind of stops everybody from attacking anybody because everything is untapped. Um, it allows for you to kind of sit back and build up your field before anything happens. Um, Another way to accelerate Yasan, obviously, you know, you got your fire boots. I don't play lightning groups because budget reason. I know it's only like a $5 card, but still, I didn't want to buy it. Um, I run Thousand Year Elixir. So, this card, three drop artifact. You may play the activated ability of creatures you control as though those creatures had haste. And it also has one, pay one, and tap this artifact on tap target creature. So, if hypothetically, if we had seven mana out there and Yasan not in there, we get to activate his ability twice. Uh, and then I also run Scrib Ranger. So, this pesky little fairy <clears throat> allows me to return a land to my hand and untap a creature. Obviously, the creature we're going to tap is Yasan. Um, I don't run too many Planeswalkers. I just don't really have a care for them, in all honesty. Uh, the few that I do, I run Nissa Vital Force, strictly because it's a plus one, and then next turn get an emblem, or they just have to deal with this. Card draw in green is very few and far between. Um, that being said, I also run Garrick Primal Hunter. We can use this to our advantage to either load up our board, or we can draw a bunch of cards. Um, and then <clears throat> I also run Nissa. Voice of Zendikar. Now, this one I'm kind of skeptical about. I've kind of thought about cutting her a few times, but her minus two to put a 1 1 counter on each creature I control is kind of insane. So I kind of like to use her in that aspect. But again, it's another way for somebody to sink like power into that instead of into my life total. Um, there's. There's a big issue with getting our cards back that we want to play with. Because, let's say we get board wiped. We can't really do anything about that in green. Except for cards like Repopulate. Look at those ferrets. So, Repopulate says, Shuffle all creature cards from target player's graveyard into that player's library. Also has cycling for two colorless. Um, the nice thing about this, if anybody's running a graveyard-oriented deck, we can also shut them down with it. Um, and with that being said, we can just target them with Loaming Shaman, which does the same thing, but it's a 3-drop. It's fetchable with Yasan, we can almost get it at instant speed. <clears throat> I use it mainly for my own graveyard. Like, if something were to happen to, like, my Seedborn Muse, I want it back. I want it in my deck. Uh, but you're probably thinking, but Mike, what if it gets exiled? We have Rift Sweeper as a 2-drop. We get an exiled card back, shuffled into our library, fetchable. Um, and then I run Elixir of Immortality. I think that should be in every deck, because you want your cards back. Um, and then I run the Eternal Witness and Green Warden of Marasa, because we like playing our cards. They're in our deck for a reason. Let's play them again. Um, I also run a lot of ramp in the deck. Mainly creatures, some are not. Um, at our one drops, I have Lanoir Elves, Elvish Mystic, and then I run Veteran Explorer. So, Veteran Explorer dies, everybody gets to search their deck for two basics. Not that bad, not that bad of a deal. I'll take that drawback. <clears throat> the other cards I run are the Wood Elves, Yavimaya Dryad, and Farhaven Elf. You know, ETB, get a forest, put it into play. Um, then we have Sad Robot as a 4-drop. 
Everybody should know what he is by now. If not, please look up some more EDH deck decks because he's in almost everything. Uh, Cultivate. I don't run Kodama's Reach because I chose Explosive Vegetation over it. Um, and then at a 6-drop slot, I run Uvenwald Hydra because I would love to have a way to fetch up Nykthos at instant speed. Also, he has Reach and is a pretty big beater. So, we'll kind of leave it at that. <clears throat> um, there's also other ways to cheat in cards other than Yasan. I don't run Natural Order. I don't run Tooth and Nail. I probably should, but I just don't for whatever reason. Um, I have Eldritch Evolution, which is a new card from... Oh, what was that name? Eldritch Moon. Wow, that took me forever to think of that. Um, so, you sacrifice a creature... Search your library for a creature card with greater mana cost X or less, where X is 2 plus that sacrifice creature's uh, CMC. Put it onto the battlefield, exile Eldritch Evolution. So it's kind of a jump, skip, and a hop o over Birthing Pod, which I also play. Um, which I think I have in a different pile over here. But I also run Quarter Calling, because we need that instant speed, whether it be like a Tajiru Preserver, whatever. We want our cards at instant speed, because it's great. Um, I also run Green Sun Zenith. I don't run Dryad Arbor, so you don't have to worry about a Green Sun Zenith for zero. It's just not my play style. Um, then Genesis Wave. Once we have like enough you know, lands and creatures and stuff like that out there, and we really just want to push the bill a little bit more, that's probably when I'll cast that. Um, in my opinion, I'm kind of thinking about cutting it, because it's a more of a win more card. And we don't necessarily need it to win. Um, on that note, <clears throat> let's talk about our ways to win. Uh, I don't play Crater Hook. I just budget reasons, again. Um, however, I do run Pathbreaker Ibex. So he's kind of a small Crater Hook. says, when Pathbreaker Ibex attacks, creatures you control gain trample and get plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. Um, <clears throat> so I kind of play a convoluted version of Crater Hoof, because I also run Elder of Laurels. So he's a 3-drop, pay 3 in a green, targeted creature gets plus X plus X until under turn where X is the number of creatures you control. Pretty swifty. Um, another way to win is we have Overwhelming Stampede, you know, very similar to the Pathbreaker Ibex. Uh, I run Shaman of Forgotten Ways, which is by Rhythm on a Stick. You get to pay 11 for it, but he also ramps, so that's kind of a cool, neat trick. Uh, <clears throat> Avenger of Zendikar, I include him in the win compile because he makes a crap ton of creatures that we can just buff and swing and kill. Um, hypothetically, if we don't have like a Pathbreaker, Ibex, or something like that, I also run Try for the Hordes. I know I'm kind of a... Uh, Oh, what's the name for it? Asshole. Because I just said that I hate Infect. However, everybody else has to have a way to deal with it, too. Um, <clears throat> it's just another way to win. And that's what everybody's goal should be, aside from having fun. Because I love to have fun as much as I do winning. Um, and then I just have, you know, value cards in the deck, like Ant Queen. You know, if I don't have anything else to do, I can make a bunch of ants. Uh, Sylvan Library is a great card, kind of allows me to dig a little bit deeper as far as, like, threats that I need. Uh, Corsair of Crufix, we're playing a lot of lands, we're probably going to gain a lot of life. <clears throat> Giant Adiphage, it's a card from Gate Crash. 7-7 uh, seven, seven Trample, whenever it deals combat damage to a player, put a token of Giant Adiphage onto the battlefield. Um, I also play Hornet Queen, which is kind of a... In a way, the secondary, like, Avenger of Zendikar. Like, if we hypothetically got bribery, we have something in the air to get. Um, I also play Woodland Bellower. Uh, sometimes we need another 3-drop, so let's say Yasan is at 5 and I want to activate him to 6. I can get this, and then I can get one of my 3-drops to deal with the threat. <clears throat> I play Skeet Mob, because he's Skeet. Uh, not really. He's a really solid 1-drop late game. Or even early game if I ramp hard enough. Um, Nylea's Disciple. Another way to gain life in green. Uh, you know, because we're going to be turning sideways a lot. We're not really going to have too many blockers up. 
so we need to make sure that our life totals are in check. Um, I also play Scavenging Ooze to help deal with those graveyard threats as well as gaining life. Um, Yeva, Nature's Herald, because everything's better with Flash. I'm not gonna lie. And then I'm also running Swag Tusk because a 5 3 for 5 that gains you 5 life, and then when it dies, you get a 3 3. We can pot him away and get a 6 drop and still have a defender there. Um. But that really does it for my deck tech. Uh, there will be a link following to my full deck list. So if you have any questions, go ahead and visit us on our Facebook page. Hit us up on Twitter. We're all over the place. Um, if you're seeing this video, there will probably be links to all of our social media on there. Um, thank you for watching, and I will see you at the table.